Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That is the theme of the day. As we take a look at the psalm, we see just how God gives us the victory in many and various ways. Please note that in the choir anthem, there is a part printed in bold for the congregation to join in singing as well. So with that, we'll begin singing with our first hymn, number 457. Please rise. on page 203 in the hymnal or printed in the bulletin. We have been called here this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, 
seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Then let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only <laughs> begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from death by sin of your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. <coughs> Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is taken from the prophet Isaiah in the 25th chapter, beginning at the 6th verse, as Isaiah paints a picture of what the great heavenly kingdom is like, and we, and we wait for when we are gathered there in the resurrection. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. We continue with the anthem, and please note the bold print is for the, for the congregation to sing. <coughs>
epistle lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 is Paul's great defense of the physical resurrection of our Lord. And here we hear about the first opening verses, the beginning of that defense. Paul writes, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you have received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me. For I am least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We rise and join in singing the Alleluia verse in preparation for the reading of our Lord's Gospel. according to St. Mark in the 17th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. We hear about another witness to the resurrection of our Lord. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Don't be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. We join now confessing our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible and in one Lord Jesus Christ, begotten of the Son, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. From you he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. 
I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as we continue singing with hymn number 469. text begins with, Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord delivers him in the day of trouble. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He will be called blessed in the land. Here begins our text, dear friends in Christ. If you're a member of my last congregation, you knew that I found the, the, uh, uh, the roundabouts that they built in Lawrence to be the most terrible idea that they had ever come up with in traffic flow that there ever had been. And, you know, they're too small, the fire trucks, some of, the, some of them, the fire truck can't get around. Others, people just kind of cut across. And uh, the excuse for using them from the police was that in this learned town, the home of KU, people did not know how to use four-way stops. I would like to have told them they didn't know how to use roundabouts either. So um, one day, I'm morning, I'm driving over, and there was an accident um, at the corner of, in, intersection of Highway 10 and 7, which is always kind of a scary thing. And it had backed up all the way to Cedar Creek Drive. So I thought, hey, I'll just hop up there and jump up to whatever is 95th at that end and take it over. So I get up there, and it's four lane. There's just two or three of us cars. You could just kind of zip along. There's roundabouts, but they're nice and big and round. You just kind of whoop, 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 whoop. You don't have to stop. I was like, cool. This is like a newborn freedom that I have all of a sudden. You know, it's like a new look out of lease on life and such things. So now as a regular day, I, when I come over in the morning to come here, I get off on Cedar Creek and I take, go through those roundabouts and aim for Shawnee Mission and head up and it's much easier than going on Highway 10. It's just like a freedom that has been given to us. As we celebrate the resurrection today, we have to understand there's a meaning to this for us. It is a new look on life. 
It is a freedom from sin. It is the justification for our faith in God. It is a witness of the faith that God has given us in all of those accounts so that we can say Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Got to be a little quicker on the uptake on that now, folks. Because this is our message today. This is what we're talking about that our Savior has come back from the dead, he has been raised, and that has a meaning. We have a victory. We have a victory over all those things that plague us and bother us and terrorize us. We have a new life, a new way of living, a new outlook on life that is found and based on in the resurrection of our Lord. Because as St. Paul says, and he does not rank them here when he says it, you know, of a first importance, that according to the scriptures, Christ died, but also of equal importance and part of that phrase, he rose again from the dead. Just imagine if it had been that Jesus died and the resurrection was going to take place when Martha said so at the end time. That would have been a message. Oh, Jesus died for your sins, you're forgiven. Well, how do I know? He's still dead. But because of the resurrection, we understand his sacrifice is complete, acceptable, and covers us. So that we can take this psalm and realize this is not a psalm of despair. <clears throat> this is not a psalm that is, that is sad. This is a psalm of faith. This is a psalm of confidence. This is a psalm of new life. Blessed is the man who considers the poor. The Lord delivers him, acts on his behalf, is always there, will protect him and keep him alive. He will be called blessed. That's who we are, blessed in the Lord. And why? Because there came this one called Jesus. And when Jesus came, he went through all the things that we deserved. He suffered on that cross. As you read through the psalm, you see all of those verses that go through about what Jesus went through. His enemies were whispering against him. His best, one of his own disciples betrayed him. He was delivered up into death and considered an outcast and smitten by God, as Isaiah said. That suddenly, all of a sudden, this, this Isaiah, I mean, this psalmist points out that this Jesus faced all of these destructive, dangerous, deadly things for us. And when he went to the cross, he paid the penalty for our sins so that we could have, in the resurrection, life in his name. A life that is based upon the power of his word that comes to us and instills in us faith and gives to us a legal witness about his fact that he actually did rise from the dead. A life that, a, that is granted to us as the Spirit works that gospel message in our hearts and brings us to faith. A life in which we are bound to our Savior by the, by the waters of baptism, where he unites us with himself to such a point that we have actually died with him so that we also can rise with him and have that new life for our very own and the comfort and the hope that it gives. It comes to us as that comfort reminds us as we gather at the altar of our Lord that this risen Lord who, is, who has been taken his place of glory above comes down through bread and wine to be with us and assure us of our place with him, that he is ever with us. This life takes place as we go through in this world and we see the hand of God acting in our lives time and time again, and we give him thanks. For example, this morning as I was driving over, coming on the other side of Highway 7, going down the hill. There's no traffic. It's kind of nice. It's a little bit, you know, wet on the road a little bit and such things like that. Do you know that deer and blacktop are about the same color at, at about 7 o'clock in the morning? And as I'm driving along, unless, until I saw the eye of that deer sparkle, I knew not that I had a deer in front of me at noon. So I hit the brake, and the deer just kind of ambles across quietly, and then the flash in the, within a second goes in front of me. Where's the second one? 
1.30. Now, I had fully expected that I would not be at church for ser first service after I hit that, at that deer, and that there would be, you know, we'd have, uh, you know, deer cakes or something like that for a potluck someday. But the deer just stood there and just kind of wound along, and I just kind of went psh, right through. And I thought, thank you, Lord. We got through this. I then thought, God, we need to have a talk about these last-minute sermon illustrations. <laughs> but that is life. We live a life of thanksgiving. Every time we, are esc we escape and we are rescued, every time that the, that the devil is not given his way, every time we are given the blessed hope, every time we are given the comfort of love, every time we are announced the forgiveness of sins, our praise to our Lord is thank you for all that God has done for us. For he has made us victors through his son's life, death, and resurrection on Easter Sunday. You know, we're in the middle of uh, March Madness, where we take, I don't know, whether they take 70, 60, I don't know, whatever teams they gather, and then you've got the NIT, they gather, and then you've got the, the, the women, they gather, then you've got the other divisions. They all gather all these teams that have had wondrous seasons, right? They've been winning. Yeah, people bought t-shirts and had to celebrate their winningness and all these things. Now understand something. All those teams, except for the one who wins the final victory, had their suspended seasons end in defeat. The final four, one will have a victory. The other three will have defeat. God did not leave us there in defeat. He has assured us that in him, all of us have the victory. All of us have a life with God. And all of us can, can sing and thank God for the things that he has done for us as, he, as his Christ went, went to be our victor, suffered in our place, and now gives us the fruits of his work in the resurrection. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we rise for the prayers. Let us pray for all people according to their needs. O oh, Holy Spirit, give guidance to our principal, Nancy Jankowski, as well as Pastor-elect Miller, that as they consider the calls that they have, they may make a decision that you have planned for them to do. Lord, in your mercy, your grant safe journey for all who travel. Lord, in your mercy, your grant peace to the world and to our land. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the safe delivery of Brooke. Now be with Mother Carolyn, that she may regain her strength, and that she and Lucas may bring this child up in a way that is pleasing to you. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, grant healing to Pat and John, who are hospitalized. Be with Ellie as she continue, as who underwent surgery this past week. Give to her healing. Be with Greg as he undergoes medical testing. Watch over Christy in her process of recovery from eye surgery, as well as seeing to the needs of Bruce, Guy, Dale, Dennis, Peggy, and Eugene. Grant that a kidney transplant may be found soon for Stephen. Lord, in your mercy, for those who deal with the extremes of the weather, Lord, in your mercy, physician of all, watch over Myra, give healing to Aaron, William, Brad, Phil, Karen, and Mildred. Provide healing and strengthening according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Heavenly Father, we pray that you would give wisdom in the medical field as they seek more ways to deal with the plague of cancer that, that affects your creation. To this end, supply your relief, especially to Brian, Gwen, Trady, David, Dale, Diana, Daniel, David, Patty, Brian, Randy, Donna, Brian, Lois, Kelly, Michael, Jerry, and Steve. Lord, in your mercy. We pray this and much more in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with the taking of the offering.
Please rise. We continue with the service of the sacrament printed on page six of your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and have given your only begotten Son, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed. By his death he has redeemed us from the bondage to sin and death, and by his resurrection has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body, given into death, and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation, until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen.
rise for the Nuke de Menace found on page 8 in the bulletin. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for the <coughs> singing of the closing hymn, number 477. <coughs>
let's get and let's give that greeting to our fellow worshipers at this as well as this this, this time. Okay. You'll be, see you'll be seated. We have a couple announcements. Yes. Okay. Um, it seems like every I keep on adding a week as we go through. For the next three Sundays, we have many. We have things happening each sun, each each weekend. Next Sunday, uh, we, we plan on hearing from pa Pastor-elect Miller on his decision about whether to accept or decline to call here. Uh, the following weekend on the 13th, we have our canvassing workshop. Some of you have signed up. We hope to see many more of you sign up. Uh, there's training. It's very low level. We don't ask you to knock on the door and say if you were to die tonight. <laughs> You know, the old Kennedy program, this is a little bit different, so please join us for that. And then the following Sunday, during the Sunday school hour, and this is for all of us, uh, we're going to have a booth explaining all of the, uh, the ministries and the, and the works that are needed from you to keep the congregation going. So we hope that you would come to that. Be willing to sign up, okay? You know, because for, for, there's quite a few things that actually take place, I think, that we don't realize on, on behind the scenes, all right? So with that, go in peace, serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. 